Welcome back to The Haunted Beard, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Well, just a few days ago, I dropped a poll on my channel asking you guys what franchise should be the next one that I review and rank. And it was very close, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre edged out paranormal activity just barely. So, here I am. Now, today, obviously, going to be kicking things off with the original, the OG from 1974. And I'll just go ahead and say, this is one of my absolute all-time favorite horror movies. It's absolutely fantastic, and I love it. And I have done a couple videos talking about this movie already on my channel. I've got like a top 10 slasher movie. I've got a video breaking down Leatherface's first victim scene, one of my all-time favorite horror movie scenes. And I just recently dropped a top 100 horror movies of all time. And this one, I think I had somewhere right in the top 10, give or take a couple spots. So... I absolutely love this thing, but let's get into it. Let's get into a full in-depth breakdown of all my thoughts on this movie and why I love it so much. Here we go. And I think the very best aspect of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is how real this movie feels. This movie has just this, this feeling of authenticity to it that horror movies rarely get to. And it's hard to say exactly why that is, but I'm going to do my best to try to explain why I think it feels so real and, and why that's all so effective for me. But this is a movie that it almost feels in, in some way like you're watching a documentary. And in some way, it almost feels like you are watching a found footage type movie. And it just happens to be edited together like an actual film. But there is just this element of realness to it to where it just makes this thing so impactful. It creates such an immersive experience. And the first reason why is I think just the look and the feel to the movie. They do. Toby Hooper does such a fantastic job creating the atmosphere. I mean, just all the the shots, the lighting, the look and the feel, the set design and everything, it all just works so well. The look and feel of this movie is something that I don't think I've ever quite experienced in any other film, at least to this level. Just the, the look of the film, it's this hot summer afternoon, and it just has this, this hot, sweaty feel to it. It's gritty, it's grainy, it's grimy, it's sweaty, and you can just feel all that. Everything just feels so uncomfortable and, and like gross, but man, it just makes this thing so impactful. And every single time I watch this movie, it feels like this isn't just a normal movie. It feels like this is a video that belongs in some sort of like police evidence file. And I can't really think of any other movies that give me that sort of feeling and that sort of vibe when I watch them. And so Texas Chainsaw Man is just kind of in a league of its own. This is such a special experience. I think one of the elements that separates truly great horror movies from just good horror movies lies in the details. When there's just these little memorable details that they just give it that extra little something that elevates it to a higher level. And of course, Texas Chainsaw has that. And just little things like, I like how the film opens up with this radio broadcast talking to you about these grave robbings that are happening. There's other little details like some of the, the people that our, our main characters run into at the very beginning when they get to the cemetery. Just some of the, the little extras and the characters, they feel like actual real people that you would run into in the backwoods of Texas, like the drunk dude sitting in the tire. Just little things like that just add a nice element to this movie that, again, just make it feel real. Other little details and even just single shots that I really like are there's a shot later on where you see the van driving down the road and you just see the heat coming off of the asphalt on the road. Just a great little shot just adds to the uncomfortability of it. I love the shot when they get to uh, the grandpa's house that's all, you know, busted down and, and, and abandoned and everything. And Kirk sees the, the spiders in the corner and just this creepy, uncomfortable little shot. And then a little bit later on when him and Pam get to the house and that tooth falls onto the porch 
it's just another like little thing that just adds something to the movie. But it's just it's those accumulation of little shots and little details that just make this movie so fantastic. And of course, the movie kind of really kicks off and starts when they pick up the hitchhiker. And again, I'm probably going to use that word authentic and real a handful of times throughout this review, but it's just, it's what I think makes this movie so spectacular. But the actor that they get here for The Hitchhiker, like, how is this guy an actor? There is no way, he's played by Edwin Neal is the guy's name, but like, there is no way he is an actor. This feels like some real crazy dude that they just picked up off of the side of the road. And... That really speaks to some of the acting in this film, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But the the scene with the hitchhiker is fantastic, man. It, it's such an uncomfortable scene. It immediately puts us on edge as he's, I mean, clearly just this unhinged dude. And you don't exactly know what he's going to say, what he's going to do, right? And then he, you know, he cuts his hand open with his own knife and he's smiling. And I like just the happy music then like the, the jolly music that's playing in the background while he's doing this. Just even the conversation that he's having, talking about head cheese and stuff like that. It's just this weird, off-putting, unsettling scene. But man, it's so well done. For about the next 20, 25 minutes or so, not much happens, right? The group, they're driving around, they get to the grandpa's house, it's abandoned and, and busted down, they're just kind of wandering around, exploring and everything, and, you know, they're, they're just not really doing much. And then, of course, you get Kirk and Pam, they get to the house because they're trying to find gas, and about 35 minutes in is really when all hell breaks loose, and from the moment of Kirk's kill to pretty much the end of the movie... This thing is one wild ride. Now, I've got a video on my channel doing like a full breakdown of this scene where we finally see Leatherface and, and Kirk gets killed. And it's one of the greatest horror scenes of all time. One of my absolute favorites. Check it out if you want some more in-depth thoughts on it. But it's, it's such a fantastic kill. And it's the sound. I will never, ever forget the sound when all of a sudden Leatherface pops up behind the doorway and raises that big old meat cleaver and just boom. <laughs> and, and what makes it so effective too is how fast it happens. It's so quick, it's so shocking and unexpected and gruesome and then just shuts the door and back to silence and you're left just with jaws dropped, eyes wide open, going, what in the heck just happened? And of course, not long after this is Pam's kill. Her kill's another fantastic one, too. I, I love that, you know, she goes into the house and then trips and breaks into the room with all the bones. And man, it's such a fantastic scene. Again, this the set design, man, it's it's so creepy and unsettling. And I like how it kind of stays on close, like there's close-up shots of her when she first falls in the room as she's like trying to get her bearings and figure out like where am I? And then the camera kind of gradually pulls back and starts panning around the room as she's like the the realization it's all dawning on her like where am i what hell hole did i just step into and you just see all the bones everywhere uh and then of course you know leatherface comes out she almost makes it out the front door and he just grabs her and takes her back into the room <laughs> What's amazing, too, is how genuinely shocking and disturbing this movie is, given how much little blood you actually see. Because compared to nowadays, I mean, the level of blood in this is, like, extremely tame. But man, the, the shock factor, the disturbing factor, are still just off the charts. This movie is 50 years old now this year, and man, does it hold up like crazy. Another element that I really love, too, about the movie is the score, because it's not like a typical musical score. There's not like really much music here. It's mostly just sounds and sound effects and these bizarre, weird sounds. Some of them are actually like animal sounds that you would you would hear on a farm, like pigs and stuff like that. 
And again, it's just it's it's another element that just makes this thing so uncomfortable and and just unsettling. I also like how they use some of the sound effects because there's like two or three like genuinely good jump scares in this movie that are really effective and not cheap. And one of them specifically uh, later on when it's just Franklin and Sally going out to look for the rest of them. They're going through the woods, pitch black. And of course, you see Leatherface. Stop! Now, once this scene happens out in the woods and Franklin meets his unfortunate demise, the movie is already pretty crazy. But this, from here on out till the very end, is when Toby Hooper just cranks the dials to 11. And this thing is just complete and total chaos from this point until the very end of the movie. And as I mentioned earlier, the acting performances in this film are, are incredible. And yeah, they're more one note. But the note that these actors hit is fantastic. And in particular, obviously, Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface is phenomenal and iconic. What he's able to do wearing a mask the entire time, just his physicality and the presence that he has is terrifying. In addition to Gunnar Hansen, uh, Edwin Neal, who plays the hitchhiker, uh, the old man, and then Marilyn Burns, who plays Sally, man... They totally sell every single moment to where, again, it just has that authentic feel to it, to where it's like you don't feel like you're watching actors. You feel like this is a real recording of this horror show and you're watching real people. Let me tell you, Marilyn Burns, some of the expressions and the look of pure terror on her face are just fantastic. Again, it feels like this woman is actually going through this experience. And then I love that she finally gets to the house. She thinks she's maybe found some some safety. She goes into the house not realizing it's Leatherface's house, runs right upstairs, and runs face-to-face -face into Grandpa, the scariest, most terrifying-looking person I think I've maybe ever seen. But not long after this, of course, we get to the dinner table scene, which is another one of the greatest horror scenes of all time. And again, the, the performances here are just completely unhinged. I just, I, every time I watch it, I'm just blown away as to how well these actors sell this performance. Because again, you just feel like you're watching these real people who are completely out of their minds. And again, Marilyn Burns, the look on her face and her eyes, she just sells the crap out of this. It's so incredible. It's so impressive. I love what Toby Hooper here does with some of the shot selection and just the extreme close-ups, all the canted and like distorted angles and everything, the extreme close-ups on her face and on her eyes. It, it's just this look of pure terror and bewilderment on her face, them all looking at her acting crazy and laughing and everything. It's, it's pure horror. As if all that wasn't crazy enough, of course, they've got the shot where they cut her finger open and then Grandpa starts licking the blood off of her finger, which is just disgusting. And man, this scene is, it's unhinged. It, it's like, it's such this intense, like, violating type scene. And it, it is, it's one of the best horror scenes of all time. It's unbelievable. It's just pure horror. And I absolutely love it. And then we get to the ending where she's able to make her escape and, and run down the driveway. And of course, Hitchhiker, Leatherface are running after her. And I love how the movie ends. Sally gets in the bed of the pickup truck and the guy takes off covered in blood. The look of just hysteria on her face. What an iconic image. And then, of course, you've got Leatherface just waving the chainsaw up in the air, almost kind of doing his little dance, just going crazy. And then it just cuts. And I love how abrupt and suddenly it ends. That's it. And you're sitting there like holding your breath and you don't know what to say. You don't know what to think. All you know is you just saw something completely insane. And it's just the absolute perfect way to end this movie. I love it. And this movie, man, look, there are there are other horror movies that have, you know, better characters, more kind of well-developed, fleshed out characters. There are other horror movies that have a more interesting or engaging plot, more compelling story to it. But if you want something that is just pure horror, 
This is it, man. This is as good as it gets. Just absolute, pure, chaotic, insanity, horror. Texas Chainsaw stands alone, man. This is as good as it gets. It's fantastic. It's pure horror. One of the very best that's ever been made. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Hopefully you enjoyed that and got something out of it. But anyways, obviously up next, I'm going to be continuing my way going through the franchise. There's actually a handful here in the Texas Chainsaw franchise that I've never seen before. So quite a few of these are actually going to be first time watches. Uh, I've only seen three total movies out of the nine movies in the franchise, including this one. So uh, the other ones that I've seen are I've seen the, the remake from 2003 and then I seen the one, uh, the 3D one, I think it's called Texas Chainsaw with Alexandra D'Addario. Uh, those are the only other two that I've seen. So quite a few first time watches. Looking forward to it. We will see how it goes. So that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of this, please do me a favor and do not click that subscribe button unless you want to be haunted by the beard.